Yo guys, what's going on? Robert Warshak here, and this is going to be a new video series that's going to be posted every week on my channel. I do a podcast with D Money Games and Draco Cat each and every week. We've been doing it for like almost 90 weeks now, and uh, we talk about Hearthstone, we break down the meta, we talk about any sort of drama or any action in the Hearthstone scene, we talk about tournaments, basically everything that has to do with Hearthstone in general or that past week we cover uh we normally would post it like i said on the metabreakers youtube but because that's just a lot of work in general uh, i asked if we could just post it on my channel instead so we're going to be moving the series to my channel and this is going to be the i guess first episode on my channel but we have like 80 some episodes plus in general hopefully you guys enjoy this new kind of content for this channel like i said both draco and d money are really really good players both of them are most of the time always top 500 a legend so it's a good mix between like my my dumpster legend ass and players who are actually good and I'm sure you guys can find a lot of insights and tips and just general discussion that we have uh to be pretty interesting and this is and that's one of the reasons why I do the podcast with these guys is because I just like talking about Hearthstone uh, with some close homies. So with that, I really hope you guys enjoy it. Please give me your feedback on this. We also include guests on the show quite frequently. We've had Zeddy, we've had Theo, we've had Chris 05, we've had Funky Monkey. Uh, we've had quite a few people from the Hearthstone community on the podcast with us to talk about Hearthstone. And uh, so, yeah, all your feedback and anything you have to say about this to improve it and or if you like it or don't like it, please, please, please let me know and enjoy the first episode of the podcast on this channel. Yo, 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 what's going on today, Twitch chat? Hopefully you're having a fantastic afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are out there on the Internet world. We are happy to have you this Sunday afternoon at not 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, a little late today. Always a pleasure, always joined by our boys, our homies, the people we love, D, Money Games, and Rackle Cat. Hopefully you guys have been doing well, Twitch chat and the homies. Anything exciting this weekend? What's been going on, homies? Um, so for, for us, anything exciting? <laughs> um, I th so honestly, we, we came into like contact with, uh, I guess, like uh, some people that, had, that were clear with COVID, so we haven't like left the house. So I don't feel sick anymore or any like or symptomatic at all. But, um, you know, just trying to be safe. So we've just been like quarantining in home and uh, not leaving. So lots of games, lots of working, lots of uh, chilling, Netflixing, you know. What about you? Netflix and chill. Uh, <laughs> wait, people are saying there's a there's an echo here. I fixed it by muting the, the discord thing on the mixer now. But now, is that going to mess up my VOD? Fuck. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, anyone want to... Graves is fixed. What? Well, yeah, Graves. the echo is fixed, but I, I don't know. Now Now it might not be in my VOD. Like, now you guys might not be in my VOD. It's um, okay. We're, we're so recording I'm... it separately anyway, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so yeah, good. you are. You are? Yep. I, I have off, I have a whole nother screen on my computer and I'm recording the desktop and I have all of our audio channeled, so we're good. I'm gonna check anyway. D Money went <laughs> to the bathroom and Rob set this up. That's what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, while Dan's fixing it, um, I went to Korean barbecue last night after not eating Ooh. all day. Yes. And unfortunately, due to inflation, their prices raised pretty significantly. It used to be twenty dollars. For their all you can eat normal, and then they had the premium all you can eat for thirty, and we never used to get the premium because it was like there's not much of a difference in meats that we would have gotten anyway because we like the like pork belly and the the beef briskets and the spicy chicken, so like that's normally what we get. So twenty bucks, but now they changed it so it's thirty dollars for the the normal and forty for the premium. So this is outrageous inflation behavior. So um. Yeah, but it was still really good. <laughs> I ate that way is too much. Wow, man. And they also have all, like all you can eat sushi too. So maybe that like it's all you can eat appetizers too. So it's like edamame and gyozo and crab rangoons and uh, all kinds of sushi rolls and then all the meats that you can order. So I went ham. We had we probably ate for like two straight hours. <laughs> and then it was like always happy hour. So like it was like buy 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 one get two wine like chardonnays for like four bucks each. I was like fuck yeah. So. It was still really you talk good. Talk about a buffet though. that you went to. Korean barbecue, so it's all you can eat. Nice, nice. Yeah, and then we did karaoke after my first time ever. Like I've been to really? karaoke before, and I've like watched people do karaoke, but my myself have never done. Like I've never sang into a mic, and um, it was really scary. So I'll never do that again. <laughs> but like, I, mean, I will was never. 
Was it karaoke like in front of like everybody or was it only in front of like so, your party? Yeah, so we rented um so basically it yeah, was like yeah, this yeah. giant building and you'd rent a room and the room was like decked out with like lights and like really heavy bass. Yeah. Um and like I mean that's a lot you know. easier though because you're in front of people that yeah. you know. It was still um, like even it's still the, gonna be, yeah. Yes, like I had a mic and I'm singing and people are listening to me and it was fucking <laughs> weird. And they're like, dude, Rob, you sing on stream all the time. I'm like, Yeah, but that's like to a webcam, there's like no one here. And like you can't and really you're tell like if not I suck. actually you're like not actually like singing. You're singing, just like, you're just like saying yeah. some of the words. Yeah. So like you, I will never do that again. The uh <laughs> the day after uh the wedding that you guys were all at, we all went to one of those exact places that Rob is describing with uh my wife and all of her like childhood friends. Um and they're all they all were like friends from like the theater program. And they all and so everyone in the entire like group of like ten could sing. Yeah, uh, including my, myself and Allie. So uh, we went to one of those like little fucking booths where they throw like 12 of us in this room with the crazy bass and the lights. And it was mm -hmm. the most amazing experience because like every single person was like overly comfortable at singing in front of everyone. And it was just like, it was a very special party. Yeah, love it. Yeah. Love it, man. Love that shit. I didn't, I didn't realize how hard it was to sing when you're the only one singing and everybody's staring at you. I'm like singing Linkin Park <laughs> in the end. And I'm just like, fuck, I know all the lyrics, but this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I, I like I love karaoke, but yes, it's very, very nerve wracking, uh, especially when it's like in front of like a bunch of random people at like a bar or something. And I've, I've done it twice. Um, wow. But Kudos to you. I, I, I couldn't do that. Thank you. But I, I didn't do it by myself though. I did. I did it with my with my boy David. We we both did. Uh, first time we did, uh, the Ed Sheeran song, uh, uh, "Don't," which is pretty good. And then the second time we did, I think we did like "I'm Yours" by Jason Mraz or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that that song so, is is a very popular song, right? Do you have like? Song. I feel like if you go to karaoke all the time, like, or at least for me, like when, when I had phases that I would go to karaoke more frequently, I eventually like learned that, like to, I figured out like my karaoke songs. And I think that's something that it takes time to do. Like if you go to karaoke every once in a while, I'd be like, okay, I always sing like personally, I always sing that song over my head by the fray. You know that song? Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I never knew that song. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I right, love it. All right, we're gonna have a karaoke it, session right here. <laughs> Please, Let's not go, again. Guys. I got fucking. I, I got nightmares, dude. Rob, you're up, bro. <laughs> no, no, no. I, dude, I was so <laughs> nervous, and it's different, guys. Like when you're, it's different in real life entertaining than like streaming entertaining. It's the weirdest thing, but like it's different. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> well, especially when you don't like sing normally like that like, yes like full on sing like my voice is yeah, not, horrible. I, i'm not a great singer either like draco is like actually he like actually a trained, is a singer like, <laughs> yeah definitely is probably like i mean it, it was, it's always nerve-wracking singing though so i can only imagine it being like much worse you know what i mean like even <laughs> yeah. if you are like a singer like it still is like heavy you know like for sure i can imagine it being very scary so I understand. You know what's heavy? This warrior meta right now. Whoa! <laughs> it's not even a warrior meta though. It's a rogue meta. I right? know. <laughs> yeah, I just see warrior at the top. Nice segue though, Rob. <laughs> yeah, I was about know? to make some kind of segue like that too. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this meta right here, this what you're seeing right here, chat. This is across all ranks, across all servers. So if you see something that's a little weird, like priest being at the bottom, lol, JK um then uh yeah that's why but yeah warrior actually at the top above rogue which i mean rogue i, I play 60 against 60 percent of it and it seems like it's the most powerful deck by far most powerful class and we're gonna see that even more in a little bit but uh yeah warrior's still up there i'm assuming it's just quest warrior still i mean that's the only warrior deck i think so yes, do you guys hate the, the thief rogue meta or do you like not hate it? What do you guys think? Dan, you can go first on this one. Um, I just it sixty percent playing against the same deck sixty percent of your games or fifty percent even. It's uh like any deck is gonna be like you're you're gonna hate that deck for that reason. Like it's just it's it gets boring after a little while. Like it, it's cool for maybe a day or something, but then it just gets 
it gets real old real quick. Um, playing it's the same thing over and over. Even if it's not uh, like an OTK deck, like I hate OTKs, like still, it, it's pretty annoying. Yeah, I, I'm I'm tired of it. I'm done with it. I don't like it. Interesting. Okay, yeah. So for me, <clears throat> I don't really mind the Thief Rogue too much. It's just those beginning turns where they go like coin panda into panda and then they like weave in gnolls because like even the classes that have like insane removal, like I was playing like a really, really control warrior and I was like trying to figure out what does well against this rogue. And even like if they go double panda, you can't even minefield it. And that's like the best early game removal that like I think the game has, right? Is the like the man the cannons in minefield and that doesn't even deal with it. It does deal with one null very, very well. Um, and it does, the, you know, man the cannons with rank car is nice because it, you know, lowers them down to two. But you really just don't have anything in the package of most of these control decks that can deal with just that early rogue aggression. And um, once you get past that, though, it's not too bad. Um, I was able to, like, just out armor a lot of the weapon rogues that did the Garrow package. I was a lot, uh, the thief rogues, they don't have the, like, the secret package anymore. It's more like the smite aggression with Van Cleef. So, like, you can really just, like, out armor that. Um, but I think the problem is that that just early game Panda, the early game Null, that really just drives the deck to like, uh, like ex super high level. Like it's just very, very hard to deal with. And even with like I said, Control Warrior and Control Priest, you you can't even deal with it. Like the best things don't deal with it. Um, as for Quest Warrior at the top, um, we we kind of went over that last week a little bit, right? When we discussed Garrett Rogue being like one of the highest, hardest skill cap decks to play at like the really high levels and then we had warrior being like what was literally said to be the inverse of that as the best easiest deck to play for players like the amount of options per turn and the how linear the game plan is like draco was even saying like you just know exactly what they're going to do on turn two is the two mana pirate on three is three mana pirate on four is four mana pirate so like a lot of people do like that like if they're playing on mobile or they're a new player, the deck's very easy to play and it's a great way to get like into Hearthstone, right? Like I would never recommend somebody to play Quest pre or Quest Warlock over like a Pirate Warrior to start. So that's probably why it's still so popular. It's just the ease and how good Do it is. Do you think <clears throat> that uh, Thief Rogue is as difficult as uh, Garot? No. No. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> no. I, they're they're very different. They're very different, but uh I'm saying like to master. Because I don't know, um, man. You don't have creativity in uh <laughs> You do in... you do get a lot of random things and you do discover a lot of random things. So utilizing those pieces, choosing the right tools for the matchups and everything can be uh can be like a skill in in a sense. Like it's, oh, it's a absolutely kind of skill. a skill. It's I, Thief Rogue is definitely not an easy deck to play or an easy deck to master. There's definitely an immense amount of nuance to it, and like playing it at a really high level and playing it are, are, are like two very, very different things because like you, you have to not only be good at playing the rogue cards, but you have to know about all of the minions and the death rattle pools and then think about the outcomes of like shadow stepping them and then using them in tandem with some of the other cards in your deck versus the matchup you're in and stuff. So, yeah, there, there are some some really cool things that you can do with thief rogue that make creative playing like very very cool but garrote rogue was one of those decks where if you were like if you mastered it you just like don't lose to people but so, like that's the same it, thing with this one though right well like this... yeah i don't know man like you you can have like bad outcomes with your discoveries you can um you know um like just have an opponent who has all the answers you know you could play against like like there are matchups that can deal with it, like you know, like Hand Warlock, Libram Paladin, um, those things. Like uh, Fell Demon Hunter has an okay matchup, it, it, even though it's unfavored. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like people can have the answers to the stuff, and you can like have like uh, brick draws and stuff like that. You know, like you can like you go in on like a null turn in the beginning, and then like draw like cards that don't do shit. Draw like Shadow Step, Shadow Step, or something like that. You know. I mean, like, even with those hands, I still can win. Like, even with, like, two preps and a shadow step, like, you still win. Like, pretty much. I'm not even joking. Um, even with, like, a shit hand, you can still win. And it's uh, <clears throat> it's just something interesting. Like, I, I think uh, they both are different skills completely, but... um, It's a weird thing to try and compare, man, honestly. Like, 
but it you know. is but like i've been hearing this comparison lately and i mean we don't see rogue at the top here we still see quest warrior so i mean maybe it's another one of those instances where like only the top people are like getting like this this rogue deck like rogue is people... the best at high legend though like if you just go to the next uh it is yeah, page, yeah, yeah. it's number one so yes um but it's also uh i don't know i feel like the top <laughs> like the top people <laughs> are getting like these insane win rates with the uh with the deck compared to like probably other ranks where they're just getting like decent win rates um yeah. like i think tice had like a 75 percent win rate with it uh the other day like he's he's been having like a 75 percent win rate i have like a 70 percent win rate with it like it's uh it's a good deck i don't know it's it's not as like lopsided as Garot Rogue, I think, but you probably um, could have had a seventy percent win rate if you really, really wanted to be good at that deck and yeah, probably. To learn how to play it, man. Like, but honestly. yeah, so even but that just brings me to the point again of what I was saying with like Garot Rogue is like even if a deck is like skill testing or whatever, or like only like the top people are like more most successful with that deck. If it's broken, it's it's broken, and like it's clearly. It's broken. clearly broken. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with that. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like though, as like if you compare it with other best decks in the game, like it's uh it's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> you know, like um like I, I would much rather Thief Rogue be the best deck in the game, um, than like Face Hunter. Yeah, or like <laughs> OTK Demon Hunter or Garot Rogue, like um like, like at least all like, the decks that we've been seeing in the past like it's it's nice to have at least something new at the top um, and it's like f a fun yeah. deck like I, I honestly feel like everyone fucking plays thief rogue yes but like it's like cool so <laughs> like i don't like blame people for wanting to play thief rogue like i would blame people for playing like poison rogue obsessively like when it's really good you know because <laughs> that deck doesn't change there's nothing exciting about it you just kill people really fast and you win um that's cool but uh you know like it's not like i don't know at least people that play thief row get to have variants in between the games like it doesn't like it's not some monotonous like every game is pretty different that's true yeah. yeah um i don't usually play the top decks but this one is like i'm playing against 60 percent of this deck so i was at this point i'm just like all right whatever i'll join it good for you like I usually don't join in, but if I'm already playing against every, like every, uh, more than every other game, it's like the same thing. I, I might you, as well man. be part of the problem. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I think it's <laughs> cool that you play it. Um, just because like, it, it is a cool deck. To, it, it's like, uh, you know, it might be the best deck in the game, but it, it's fun, and you get to showcase being like creative and coming up with cool little lines and stuff like that. And yeah, I have yet to play Thief Rogue at all. I want to, but it's too popular. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. I I practiced it for a THL game once, um, and I played it for like three games. So my first game, I discovered a a Zixor, um, and uh, I won that game because I eventually drew the Zixor Prime, and then I played Zixor, and then um, managed it. to shadow step one of them. And the following turn, I played another one and ten wooed it, and then played another one. And I eventually played like six Zixor primes um, and, and won this the game. Good. And that, that felt so fun, you know, because it was like, okay, I just made this card, put it in my deck and won from playing it like six times. That's not even in my deck. Like, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah Zixor is a great time in Rogue. Uh, wow, Hobbs and I actually had like literally a very similar game where he was playing like uh, some Paladin uh, during like the, the theory crafting, right? And then like we, we played like I think 11 six or that game. <laughs> it, it was really fun. So yes, I agree. Rogue and six or is great. The reconnaissance is fun. Did I any think... of you guys see Rekvam's oh. clip of Thief Rogue from like last night? Was it the Koldara Drake thing? Yeah, with, with, uh, with scabs. I've seen so many people pull that off though. It's not, it's not really too new to me. It's, I think, um, yeah, I believe that it's not exciting, but it's, I, I haven't really, I haven't done it myself though. So, have you have you seen this interaction, Warshak? What? Okay, so you <laughs> uh, you find a Coldera Drake somehow with uh, Thief Rogue, and then okay. you play Scabs, 
be okay. like before you play the cold dare drake and then that zero mana like make the next mana cost two less spell in cold dare drake means that like your entire deck is free mm -hmm. like you can just play all the cards because you can just play the hero power to make things two mana cheaper non-stop so, yeah, okay. so then so you play Edwin, and then you get a million yeah, yeah. cards. You play everything, you play Mr. Smork, and then you win the game. Yep. Yeah. So ways to it's get Caldera cool. Drake from... Font of Power. Yeah, I was about to say, oh. Front of Power, which you can get from the Swash Burglar when you play against a mage. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Wand Thief. Give it to you. So it's actually not too impossible. No, but it's, but it's definitely like a sick clip if you get it, because yes. you get to make your whole deck free. That is, that is quite, quite juicy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, we do see, uh, I think it's like the third week in a row that we see tier one, like, only with rogue decks, I'm pretty sure. At top um, legend. Yeah, this is top 1k legend across all regions, and uh, thief rogue, poison rogue, cute rogue. That's, that's tier one. That's, uh, and it's been that way for a bit now. And thief rogue is like 25% of the meta too, like, so... Not only is it the number one deck, all regions, but it's like 25% of the top legend meta as well, which means one in every four games, you're going to see a rogue that's playing a thief rogue. So You know what's super interesting here is that we're seeing a trend where the good players aren't playing Librum Paladin or Quest Warrior. It's crazy. So you're happy? Well, it's just something to take note <laughs> for those players who are trying to up their game and they're like, I want to be a top thousand legend gamer and they're spamming Librum Paladin. Maybe that's not the way. So just this this is really great. I think great Librum data. Paladin is still it's still good. Don't and say that. It is, it's like it one of the only actually, decks that has a favored win rate against Thief Rogue, actually. I don't so think it's favored. Don't, I think it's like Don't say I these think, things. It it so, is favored. So Vicious so Syndicate put up their stuff. recent report. I was blessed enough to feel Thief Rogue uh, figure out how to beat Fell Demon Hunter in real time. Uh, because at one point, Fell Demon Hunter was like good against Thief Rogue. <laughs> and then, like, all of a sudden, as I was spamming it nonstop, it started to be like, okay, I did everything I could and I lost. Okay, I did everything I could and I lost. And then, like, by the end of the week, it was like, Fell Demon Hunter is not good against uh, Thief Rogue anymore. <laughs> I was just like, oh, okay, I felt that. <laughs> I really it felt seems, that. It seems decent, actually, but... It's like 45% it really, <laughs> win rate, so, like, you yeah. can win, but, like, you, it's more likely that you lose. <laughs> it feels like a lot of games are... Uh, decided by Kurtris. A lot of games are decided by how you draw. Yeah. Um, do you get Kurtris? Do you get Skulls? Do you get Talented Arcanist with the Emulation Aura in time before you die? No? All right. GG. Uh, like, do you have it on, like, turn three when they have... A full board of like four fives and three threes, yeah. Um, but there was uh, something I wanted to bring up. So uh, we've seen Rogue dominating for like the past two or three weeks, and we also have so we have the uh, the outcome of the faction war between Horde and Alliance, uh, which I think is coming up on the twelfth, which is Wednesday, I believe. Um, but that's also very close to Tuesday. Wednesday is actually very close to Tuesday. It's actually the day after. And very good. Tuesday. Oh, dude. Yes, thank you. Tuesday is patch day, usually. And we haven't really heard anything about an update in a while. Rogue has been out of control for a, a bit now. And people have been uh, very uh, much been wanting scabs to go to eight mana. They want null to get increased. They want carryall to be increased. Um, I have a very strong feeling. And also... There's there's should be BG's announcements very soon for like competitive battlegrounds. Um so I, I have a feeling that this Tuesday, uh not only are we gonna get standard changes, but we're also going to get uh some updates on battlegrounds and some other stuff as well. I think I think this Tuesday is gonna be a big Tuesday. Um it's either this one or next one, honestly, but I don't know. Like it's we've been in the dark like once you're like in the dark for too long, like you know like there's about to be a light at the end of the tunnel. You don't know where the where the hell it is, but like you can feel that like any moment, any step you take, you're gonna start to see that light. So I they think, could just uh, announce the mini yeah. set and nothing. That could happen. No, they, <laughs> you know? they like have to like. I I'm pretty sure it fits very well with the timeline that we should see like some big stuff now, like Tuesday. Uh, that's all I'm saying. And yeah. you know, Metabreakers podcast, we've been uh, we've been right about. 
quite a few I, things. So I don't know in the past though if like um we usually have nerfs between like the uh right after the holidays ner nerf and the mini set. The mini set's coming in like February though. Oh really? Okay. I think it's like early February. All right, then maybe. And I know it feels like this set has been out for a year now, but uh, it's only <laughs> it's only been like a month, Draco. Yeah. Usually no. the mini sets come out in uh, in January, but then again, like uh, in, in the previous years, the the expansion came out earlier. Like Darkman Fair yep. came out like first week of December and stuff. Mm -hmm. I thought we were getting our mini set soon. To be honest, that's what I had thought, but everybody has been telling me otherwise. So now Do we have I'm any telling guesses? everybody else otherwise. <laughs> Do we have any guesses on the mini set? Do we have any like speculation? Um, something about the battleground Alterac Valley, I imagine. Um, or song gold. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking they might like they're do gonna some... do a different. Yeah, area. yeah, because like AV was the That's biggest cool. of of the battlegrounds, right? So like your mini set could be the smaller battlegrounds, which would be your um, uh, AB, uh, War Song, stuff like that. Um, but we'll see. I don't know. I'll have to think on it. <laughs> but we that would will make kind see. Of sense. Yes. Um, the only thing I wanted to bring up before we move forward is Ramp Druid yeah. on this list at all because a lot of people have been playing that deck and doing really, really well with it. And there's like a lot of different builds of Ramp Druid too. So that's it's been kind of cool uh, tinkering with that um, past couple days it is not. and seeing the builds. It is that's not, sad. but it is it is a very playable deck. Um, it really depends on your matchups, I think, and uh, how well you could draw. Ramp oh, well, you can draw your three. ramp cards, probably. Yeah. Tier three okay. at forty-eight point eighty-eight percent, right underneath the Mozaki Mage, <laughs> which I see a lot, surprisingly as well. I see a decent yeah. amount of Mozaki. Yep. Yeah, Mozaki is still very strong, but uh, the Thief Rogue does help keep it in check quite a bit. So that's why yes. you might not see it as much as you think you would. Oh, yeah. Pyro Warrior and Thief Rogue really shut it down because they're just really fast. Yeah, any fast deck like Thief Rogue's very fast too. Mm -hmm. Um, of course. So, um, but yeah, we do have a new another topic. We want to talk about ranked mode a little bit. So I don't think I really have a graphic for this. I mean, I could pull up the most played thing as well. I guess we can do like most played modes, and then you could talk about ranked or something. Does yeah, we're also probably a little bit behind in conversation, and that was like a long one, so we could skip over that if you want to. Uh, I think this is pretty interesting here. Um, so we have a graphic here. This is on Reddit. Uh, it's from Firestone. This is the total hours played per game mode per day. And this is uh, over the span of the last few months. Uh, the last, like, four months or so. Um, and you can see uh, all the different modes here represented by a different color. And uh, there are charts here. Anyone Mercenaries PvP is so down there. That is the purple one. Yes, the lowest <laughs> mode. More yeah. people play wow. PvE than the PvP. Because you have to play the PvE to get to the PvP. So it does make sense, but like that's like really low. Like <laughs> and Mercenaries PvP. PvP has never eclipsed the PvE. That is true. <laughs> I tried to eclipse it. First two days, and I just, I couldn't do it. <laughs> Duels is like twenty five times more popular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. duels is actually the third most popular mode as of recent. And like, mm -hmm. yeah, wow, that's uh, that's crazy. I've had I you know how long I've had that uh, like every single duels quest that we get for like the holidays and stuff like wow yeah. It's so hard for me to complete those two. I wish they just didn't give It's the hardest them. quest in the game, bro. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, you see Battlegrounds is, uh, of course, the highest one. And and Standard has recently actually peaked above. That. It was probably when the new set dropped, it looks like. Yes, um, that, that huge spike is the it, new yeah. set. Yeah, that's yeah, it's exactly what that is. I mean, it's good. It's, it's actually good to know that like it still can get to that point, like that it still can <laughs> surpass Battlegrounds. You know, doesn't that make you feel like a little good inside? Um, I guess. Like that is still like, that, like how quickly still, it drops like, off. Up there. I mean, what like how fast is that? Uh, that's about two weeks until that 
bottom there. So I mean, it's still not so far below it, though. That's like our that. luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what that that's is too. for real, though. Like, it's like new set came out. What's this owl deck? Oh my god, fuck this owl deck. <laughs> oh my god, fuck this game. Yeah, yeah. and then Owl they're gets, like, okay, Owl's nerfed. And then it goes back up, and then Thief Rogue, and it goes back down. <laughs> oh, shit. But yeah, that BG graph is pretty pretty insane, to be honest. Like, that, that's some really good growth uh, overall. Um, I'm trying to, like, get anything other than BGs is the most popular and standard follows up. Uh, I mean, Mercenaries PvE is... Like we said, it started off like really good. Like it, it peaked and hit this uh, BG or the BG line. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Which showed that people were interested, but it didn't hold their interest. Um, which means they, there still could be potential there. I mean, if you even look at the battlegrounds chart, it originally starts and then it drops off pretty significantly, and then slowly builds back up as they released. You know, maybe more things to do or just better heroes. Yeah, it's like it's like an NFT. You know, it's like. <laughs> When when they get when when they we all get minted, all you know it. When they all get minted, it just it's you usually see a big drop off. But you know, if there's a lot of hype around the project, you got a good roadmap, you got some good utilities coming. You know, it'll it'll spike back up. Don't even worry about it. That was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I've never yeah, said. Yeah. All right. Moving on. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> next thing we have to talk about is uh, Draco wanted to. Uh, bring up the uh something about ranked mode in general we had a conversation about this for the podcast started because it's been something that i've been thinking about for a while um and that is kind of uh wh why i feel a little bit less excited about uh ranked like uh getting higher ranked in hearthstone and then i uh started having and then we started talking about um in comparison to uh now like the star bonus system in hearthstone to the rank system that existed prior um back before the star system meaning that there were rank walls um and you would climb from rank five to legend if you hit legend you start at rank four and then you would have to net like 20 wins uh versus your losses no win streaks to get legend but in that time period you would play against um anyone who is the current rank that you were at so if i was rank four I could play against like uh, like Tice if he was rank four, but I could also play against like any person in the world, no matter how good they were in the past. Like my grandma. If they, like yeah, I could pay, play D Money's grandma if she was rank four. So through a period of times of like trying to get better at the game, since I was playing against an overall demographic, I started feeling like I was making a lot of progress because I started to do the legend climb faster. I started to win win overall in, in general for the overall demographic that I was facing versus playing 11x players every single day, every single time, always people at the same skill level. Um, so it was, I, I think in a degree, it made me feel a little bit more um, excited when I hit legend, it made me feel a lot more excited about my, my progress as an individual player. And um, even though it was much more punishing because you had it to net so many more wins and there was no easy way to get legend, every single time that I got legend before the star system bonus happened, I felt good about it. I felt like, cool, like we, we accomplished uh, the mission for the beginning part of the month. Uh, so then we move on to the next mission. Um, and every single month, that was like something I was excited about doing. And the second I got there, whether it was like the same day or whether it was like 10 days later, I always felt fucking good about it. But now, now I don't really care. Um, and, and whenever I see like, <laughs> like people like, there's like pretty much no relevance that's showing like the deck you hit legend with anymore. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever thought about that, but it used to be like kind of cool and exciting to see like, oh shit, dude hit legend with burn shaman. I didn't even know that was playable, but like homie hit legend with it. It must be playable. So you can like net that many wins over losses against the overall demographic. Where like now you can like basically play like some some meme deck with 11x and you'll always get legend. So just saying you hit legend with a deck no longer carries weight. And even if you have a 10x legend, all you have to do is net like uh, 12 wins versus the original, which was twice as much. So that says even less still. So yeah, it, it definitely felt more rewarding uh, getting to legend in the 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 other system. 
uh because it was hard i don't even think there were like rank floors either back then there was rank five uh I i'm talking about when there was rank floors like you don't fall past okay. rank five if, yeah. you, if, if you i mean even so like it's yeah it felt a lot more rewarding because you actually had to like win more than you lost like and now like if you have 11x i could play anything and i'll get to legend eventually even if even if i have like a 30 percent win rate or something like that like if i win a few games i'll still get to legend like i get two two bonus like i get i, I get a bonus star uh like all the way to legend um so it is it is easier it does feel less rewarding it's also nice that i don't have to really grind as much it's less heavy. So it has it has its positives and negatives. Also, it's probably better for like the casual player, and that's what games usually uh, gravitate towards is like making a better experience for casual players. So like now, uh, somebody that doesn't play as much as like me or or the three of us, um, it's not as much of a grind. They don't have to feel like they don't have to put as much time in to get to legend, so they probably feel a little better about that. So yeah. I think, yeah, there's yeah I mean, like, I think there's probably more positive things about, like, the changes than than the negative ones. But I I, and I, I agree with all of the, the good things about, like, the casual demographic. But I think, like, what makes ranked games fun, and people don't really talk about this too much, is there being some kind of, like, end game that's super challenging to get to and to say you did get there, um, which Legend was, like, was supposed to be that in Hearthstone. I mean... Or yes but like there's also like i also like kind of believe like the legend especially with the new system more now than ever is like like legend is the start of the grind like you're you're trying to get to the top ranks like that's what you're working towards like right it used to be like that you're working towards legend and then you're working towards the top ranks but now i was answering like, the casual yeah. perspective that, thing yeah, yeah, that you yeah. were just responding to exactly. you know what i mean like i'm not but and i'm not talking about the hardcore perspective i'm saying from the casual perspective like I got you. Yeah. you always were like oh my god i i just want the card back i want to hit legend i want to say i did this so i can feel like i like you know got to that level at the competitive strategy game that i play um, and, uh, I, I feel like, like now, like saying like you hit legend, it, it has like, uh, like a, a, a percentage of the weight that it did in the past. And now there's not like a, a, a pinnacle point for like, I don't know, like casual to intermediate players to like really want to get to, like, you can say like, I really want to be top 1000. I want to be a three digit gamer, but like, you know, there's. That's not you don't get anything to s symbolize that other than a three digit number. You know, I what get I mean? the extra bonus star for the next month. Yeah, like that's what people like. That's what people that's look true. forward to is like the t like getting eleven x instead of ten x because that does make a big difference for the next month. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The difference between ten and eleven. I mean, I've never had eleven ever. <laughs> it's never, but I can only assume that having like, you know two stars per win at d5 to legend like it just makes the climb like not like you said not as enjoyful like it doesn't feel like there's much weight to it <clears throat> but that's because you're 11 stars and you like you know you're top 15 percent of the total legend player base which is already like around one percent of total player base so like you're the highest of the high and they don't want you to have to grind back to legend because you know they you've already proved that you're you're there you, you know what i mean that's not they try to remove the grinding aspect for competitive competitive players, but like you said, it can also negatively affect the casual players, um, just because it's not, it doesn't have that edge that it used to when it was like quite like it was it was pretty difficult to get to legend, but now not there's, to say it's yeah, not hard to get to legend. It. Yeah, yeah. Now it's still like a lot of players like that's still an end goal, and there's a lot of players who just you know they're gold, plat, diamond, and that they've never been legend before, and that's fine too. I mean, our visions of this game and how we play are completely skewed because it's literally our jobs <laughs> and we play it so much and we've been playing it for five, six plus years. Right. So, um, nine years. You know, yeah. Our, 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 our outlooks and how we play are going to be much, much different than the player who plays three hours a week <laughs> total. Yeah. I, I think like what uh, GDI was saying in chat would probably kind of like be a solution to this is to a degree as well. Where like if like the eleven X like top whatever one thousand top fifteen hundred players in a region um, had like a different rank that was like um, like 
I don't know what that what what you want to call it. Like some kind of super cool name, super cool little logo in the corner with a number, like anything like Grand that. Master. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like, um, like th this exists in pretty much like all competitive yeah. games with MMR systems, except Hearthstone now, where it's like. I mean, it it is. It's still like Legend is that, nah. but it's like because you. It, in all in all those games, like when you reach like challenger or grandmaster or whatever, then you get that uh like actual like number rating like you do in Legend. So it is kind of the same, but since there's so many people in Legend nowadays and like it's it's a little easier, I guess, to get to Legend. Uh, I don't think it's it the same because like the other games you know? have that weight we were just talking about though. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like the fact where like losing is so much more punishing than it is winning. Like, uh, you always can fall back. You always have to net like way more wins than losses and be incredibly consistent to get to these ranks. Yeah. And you then... can like fall out of like their legend or like grandmaster kind of thing. Right. Yeah. 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 You can, you can fall from like challenger to grandmaster to master. You can fall all the way back to master. Um, but their seasons aren't a month long. Their seasons are quite long. Yeah. Like two or three. Yes. Like Hearthstone seasons are really quick, and that revolves around the competitive aspect of Hearthstone. Um, you know, getting the top legend each month so they can get their placements to get into the Masters tours. So like ranked kind of follows in like with their whole esports scene of how like seasons go and resets work. So well, true, but like if we just had like if top one thousand players were considered like let's say like we'll call them like Hearthstone challenger. Like if you were just Hearthstone challenger, you get the eleven x star bonus, and then the top. 10 uh you know top 16 challenger players at the end of the month uh get the uh things it doesn't change the way the, the system works and if you get out of the 10x range into the 11x range then you're your challenger hearthstone and then that gets its own card back and um you know um but you, you still the, the thing that would make it difficult though it would would be if that when you climbed back instead of giving like 11x to players uh they would give you like 11x to um to legend and then once you got to legend you had to you know re-get back into challenger unless you were in unless you were in the top percent you know what i mean like that climb is the same you know the climb from legend to challenger is like what everyone would go through unless like you ended in challenger and your mmr got you back there immediately because you were that high yeah Having yeah that different, so, right, yeah go ahead you, you just you want yeah yeah you want to add like another step past legend which like uh, we said other games do but like i don't know Har I, I highly doubt hearthstone would do that i'm down for it no, i would yeah. like to see something past legend because if i'm ranked 3000 and some guys ranked a 100 it should be noted that like that's a big deal and right now there's no weight like okay like they're both the same they look that you know what i mean there's no weight to it besides the 11x when it should be like i know card back you know, a special name for it, a special little symbol or whatever, whether it be top 200, top thousand, there just should definitely be be more benchmarks within legend itself to have that weight being carried. Yeah. It lets people say that they're a good player without making them sound like they're like, you know, doing it for the clout. Like you don't have to write like high legend gameplay. You can be yeah. like ch challenger starting here. Yep. You yep. know, like, and it just, the, in the title, you can, you can, you would just be able to instantly identify that the person you're watching is a person who plays to win who's like very good at the game and like that's like what you're watching you're watching one of the <laughs> the challenger players at the end like yeah also one good thing uh that can come from that is that if there is a separate rank um like one thing that i always want for not only myself but like everybody in general like because uh, a lot of people are always asking like if they're getting like where's the cutoff for 11x and 10x you know mm -hmm. and like i want to yeah. know that myself uh, like that Let's would actually that like that would solve that problem. You would know, like, if I get to top 1K and I become this, like, elite whatever, um, then I get 11X next uh, next season. Um, like, I think it's pretty stupid that you can't see, like, that you, you're you just always in the dark. Even if you're at, like, 1K, like, you still might not even get the 11X. Like, you really don't know until the new season starts. And then you get screwed over, and it's like, okay. Well, yeah, then you get to watch all the legend grinds, the challenger on the last day, you know, like trying to get to challenger before the reset, you know, like keep my. Yeah. To keep being a challenger player like I usually am, you know what <laughs> I mean? So if you're yeah. watching Blizzard, all right. Yeah.
There you go. I, that's, that's something something interesting to uh, talk about. Yeah, I just think it would be elites. a way to make like the really good players excited about being really good and the casual players like excited for a progression system to get to a point of feeling like they were like, you know, really good too. You know, like that's like exciting. Yeah, I mean, trust me, there's a lot of top 100 people that play like they're in 3000 anyway, so it's all the same. Yeah. No, but anyway, we have one more topic here before we go into a little Q&A. And uh, that topic is, I just wanted to cover real quick that uh, Alkali Lake had made a, um, who is the community manager of Hearthstone, of course, um, she made a community TikTok uh, account that does not, it does not have zero followers anymore. This is just like the graphic from what she posted. But um, yeah, so she made a Hearthstone community TikTok and some other Hearthstone creators, it's inspired some Hearthstone creators to post some hearthstone inspired tiktoks recently and uh yeah tiktok is a great space for like streamers in general to to grow and just like content creators of any sort uh to grow um so it's very nice to see that uh i mean she's alkali lake like as a community manager has been doing like a, a lot of great things and this is another great thing because tiktok has a lot of potential it, it's like hearthstone in general is, is a little tough to grow on tiktok is maybe not the greatest uh, content for tiktok but um it's still a way to grow and it's nice to see like hearthstone being on different platforms too um and i i'm i'm inspired to get a, a hearthstone tiktok on there as well exclamation point tiktok if you want to see my cringe ones right now but yeah <laughs> I, I think this is only a good thing but i i also wonder like i i feel like the majority of like the hearthstone demographic are uh less tiktok users than tiktok users do you know what I mean? Oh, uh, what are you yeah. saying? Sorry. It's, well, it's less like the, what? There are less TikTok oh. users out of the general demogra demographic of Hearthstone than ones that use it. Like, I would say, like, less Hearthstone players use Twitter, like, than, like, ones that do. And TikTok is probably, like, an even smaller amount because Hearthstone is generally leveraged and the primary demographic is, like, adults um, and primarily males, just looking at the, the data um and it's like adults primarily males between the ages of 25 and 45 and like that demographic is not going to be the primary demographic that's going to be a frequent user of tiktok that would consume like harson community stuff so but at the same time since there's not another one um you know like you're gonna like corner that market and it'll be cool to like you know that there's like the small little community growing on this platform that's sick um but yeah i i, I wonder how much receptive people there are out there for hearthstone tiktok you know that's what i wonder yeah so you could like shed you could look at that in two lights right so you go okay well tiktok isn't necessarily what all the you know the majority of the hearthstone players either use and or have and or interested in so you're getting people who are maybe watching this content for hearthstone that don't play hearthstone to get them into hearthstone you know what I mean? Like you, you are on this new platform that has a shit ton of reach, a shit ton of people that are using it and they're watching a lot of it. So if you can get like Hearthstone in front of them, that may be just something that you just open up to a brand new audience. However, like we, like you had mentioned, this community account is not like tied in any way to like actually like Blizzard or like play Hearthstone, right? It's just a collie going out of her way as a good community manager to give you know, to get people more involved and to post fun content. So I just feel like while she is doing a fantastic job and, you know, it's been significantly better having her, um, it's just a lot more work for her. And like, is the payoff there? You know, if, you know, this is just another right. thing on her plate that may not give the same results as maybe focusing on a platform that they already have a lot of followers on, like Instagram. I don't like their Instagram isn't really that active, nor like, do they they don't really post reels or clips so i don't know um we'll have to see how it goes i mean anything's good anything to get more players playing and if this is something she wants to do then that's great <laughs> like all for it right but i just i would hate to see her get burned out cause she's trying to do so many cool things right and like i already know how much how hard it is to just do a youtube and streaming and she does like everything like she's insane <laughs> she's a monster <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, like, like you guys are saying, like, it, it might not be like the target demographic or audience, but 
<clears throat> it's just it, like it can only be like a positive thing. Yeah, yeah. Like that. whether how much it's gonna how much of an impact it's gonna have, who knows? But uh yeah, you never know. We'll see. And uh maybe it'll get Rob on TikTok. Let's go. <laughs> Dude, when it first started up, I should have joined just because it was like, you know, a thing like Vine, but I never made a Vine either. But I definitely should have done the whole TikTok Vine thing, but I just never It's not it's too, too late much, for TikTok. Man. Not it's always late. too late. Yes, it is. You can make dude. some wacky TikToks. Yeah, I guess we can end it here. If you guys, cool stuff. Uh, yeah. All right. Sounds. All right, you guys good. have an amazing day. Thanks for having me on the podcast, uh, as always. And uh, yeah, have a wonderful, wonderful stream, D Money. All right. Yes, sir. Well, hold on. Let me let me shout you out before you say goodbye. Let me let me shout you guys out real quick. Let me shout you out. Um, if you guys would like to check out our uh, our fellow co-hosts, uh, we do this every every week together. Uh, Warshack and Draco Cat. I don't even think I fixed the podcast command yet. Um, but, Are you kidding uh, yeah. me, dude? I don't know how to fix it. I, I need to go into my actual. Uh, you're gonna make me do some work here, bro. Um, you literally, it's not even that hard. What kind of streaming shit do you have that you can't change your commands like in like five seconds, dude? It's stream because it's I, I can fix Nightbot commands very easily, but stream elements commands I actually like have to go into the command on my stream elements website and like what no on, you download right no you download stream labs chat box and there's like a little box that has all of stream like it has labs you use stream labs yeah oh, that's what i've used forever and i just it's awesome disgusting. i have like this little box and it just like auto connects and it's just i, I can literally go into the mainframe whenever i want i have full control well, there we go. There's the uh, there are our co-hosts right there. Check out Warshack and Draco Cat on their respective channels. It would be awesome. It means a lot to me, and uh, probably to them as well. And they are great content creators as well. So I hope you guys check them out. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for having me. And, Thanks for uh, having me. Yeah, I'll see you guys uh, next week. Have a have a great one. Have a good stream. Have a good uh, yeah. Have a good day. See you later, later guys. Later, Dan. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.